Pull deuce. Pull deuce. There you go. Alright, sorry. Actually, um, nobody can hear me on that. Um, my bad, uh, actually. So, sorry about that. I um, actually had the mic off. So, I'll probably cut that part out <laughs> and start from this part. Uh, what I'm doing today is a pan seared uh, Chilean sea bass. Uh, what happened uh, was uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to go ahead and do a live stream today. Uh, due to um, uh, due to the weather, so the weather is kind of okay. We are we have a little rain here and there, a little wind, but nothing uh, major as you can actually see. I'm gonna point you out the door there. Well, you actually can't see too much. Well, it's it's accurate, but it's it's just, it's regular overcast. Nothing right now going too much. Um, that being said, I am going to go ahead and get started on everything. Uh, I'm going to get started on the, um, I'm sorry, uh, the, the asparagus. Sorry, my brain is uh, somewhere else real quick there for a second. Um, and then I'm going to start on the, pre the pre pure puree of the uh, sweet potatoes. Um, I think I, if you remember last time I told you that I, I was wearing, I've been wearing, wearing Invisalign, so sometimes my words won't come out uh, because of the way my teeth are shifting and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get used to everything. So uh, be patient with me when I'm trying to get some of these words out. Um, so we're going to do the puree, which is a sweet potato puree that's been actually boiled, uh, potatoes that have been boiled in orange juice and uh, unsalted butter. And that is going to be the topping on the sea bass. So we're going to do a pan sear of the sea bass, and uh, um, once again, I'm going to go ahead and show you this. This is my seven spice with some olive oil, and there you go. I just got to mix it up together, but that's going to go on the sea bass as well as the uh, asparagus. So there you go. All right. Anybody that tried to join earlier, I had a little technical difficulty with the uh, mic. I thought I had it on, but I did not. Uh, and it's working now. So I see my little sister down. I know what to look for next time. All right, so I'm going to get started with the asparagus. Let's get that out of the way first. So I can let that sit in the seasonings. So here you go. Also, what I'm going to do is that uh, since I'm going to be grilling, I'm going to go ahead and start this up right here. I'm gonna. It's got to preheat, so by the time I get ready to grill, this will be hot. So get that turned on. Go ahead and check the flames on, make sure that they're even. So that's going to be heating up there. Let's do a five and a four. Yeah, that looks good. So that's going to heat up while we're getting everything prepped up. Let me get these uh, asparagus stalks together. So basically, all I'm going to be doing is actually cutting off the ends, which I can do one false swoop here, one false. So, bam, that quick. Actually, I told you I got my little trash can over here to the side, which I don't have to touch actually. Automatic. So what I'm gonna do is put these back on the plate. A little spread out. And I'm gonna take some of my seasoning, olive oil mixture. Mix that up real good. Once again, if you didn't hear what I was talking about, this right here is a uh, my seven spice with olive oil. This plain old regular olive oil. Take a couple of teaspoons of that, tablespoons of that. That way they'll be nice and coated and seasoned well. Toss them up a little bit. And I'm gonna let these sit to the side and then I'm gonna toss them once more uh, once I'm ready to rip. All right. Wife got that taken care of. Let me wash my hands real quick. I'm gonna 
be oil all over the place. Actually, I don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to clean this off real quick. And put it to the side. And what I'm going to show you next is the puree for the, well, it's got, not the puree, it's going to be the sweet potatoes that I'm going to puree. So like I told you before, I went ahead and I did butter and orange juice. But not too much liquid. Not too much liquid at all. Because actually I'm going to drain this and I'll add the liquid back as needed and go from there. So let me do that real quick. It's actually got a, it's going to be pretty good, a pretty good flavor. So, hello to the next, the person that joined. I am draining the the sweet potatoes. This was actually, whoops, let me do these the other way. What it is is orange juice and uh, butter, uh, unsalted butter that I actually um, put sweet potatoes in to cook to boil because I'm making this as a puree. So as you see, nice little color. This was awesome. this wasn't frozen. This was fresh sweet potato that I chopped up and cut. I wanted to pre-cook it first. That way it wouldn't take so long uh, for the video. So what I'm about to do now is go ahead and start creating a pureeing. Sorry with the words again. I'm having a hard time with that. Bisaline <laughs> does a lot of stuff to your mouth when you're using them. If you know what that is like uh, plastic braces. All right, let's get a little closer here. As you can see, they're really tender. So my goal is to get it really, really, really smooth. So this right here, if y'all seen last time, is an immersion blender. These are awesome. You can actually use these when it's cooking as well. So, um, you know, anything with hot and cold, making soups. Uh, it works really well. I love the, I love one. These will always be in, this will always be in my kitchen. So, so what I'm doing now is getting that consistency that I need. I add more juice if I need it. Uh, the sauce that it was actually cooking in, which was orange juice and butter, like I said. Smells awesome. Instead of using like sugar and stuff like that, do it. Use um, using a uh, orange juice for that little sweetness and that little tart. I want to make sure everything is. Blend it really well. See how work quick work that is? Okay. Let me go ahead and do a few more rounds. Actually, I think I want a little more creamier, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the My, add a little bit more of this um, juice that I was actually, that the, the potatoes, sweet potatoes cooked in. Just a little bit. I don't want it really runny because I want it to have a nice presentation on top of the sea bass. See now how we're getting it? It's really nice. Really, 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 really smooth. So that did it. That's, it. That's the consistency that I want. Kind of messy. Let me clean my glasses real quick. <laughs> All right. All 
All right, done with that. I right, still got stuff in my glasses there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this to the side for now, because this is gonna be the topping for the sea bass. All right, this is the sea bass. I actually didn't think I was gonna get this today. Um, I was lucky to find it. There's a scan and everything. I was lucky to find it at my uh, local grocery store, HEV down, down the street. I thought I was gonna have to go make a run for it everywhere, but I was lucky. So, one more. so what? One more thing. One more thing? Oh, hey, yeah, thank you. Whoever's joining, appreciate you. Throw this away so I don't get it everywhere. Trash will definitely be going out tonight. <laughs> Hopefully everybody is safe if they're in the area of the storm. If not, probably they're enjoying really hot weather or really nice weather. Right now we have a little mixture of everything, a little bit of heat, a little bit of rain. The sun makes people boo every now and then. But uh, definitely some rain. All right, so that is uh, the sea bass. It's a very, it's a flaky fish. Uh, most of the time you're going to bake, uh, you can do a pan sear on it, which I'm going to do a pan sear on this. Get a really nice one. Um, really, it's just, a, you can do so much with it, but a nice pan sear will look really good on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, olive oil and seasoning. Uh, if you didn't see what it was, I'll show you out in a little bit um, and give it a nice sear at the bottom so it crusts up pretty well. Um, and then also turn around and get a nice coat, get a nice, uh, you know, sear on the top. So I'm gonna let it sit for a second while I put the my seasoning on it. Once again, if you came in late, this is uh, olive oil with my seven spice that I make. So I'm gonna mix that up really well. Actually, you can take some bread. There's a restaurant we go to, I'm not gonna call them names, but uh, they actually have this and they, you can dip your bread in it, it's really good. This is kind of like my version of it. I'll make sure it's incorporated really well. All right, I'm gonna take a spoon of that. You can see how dark it is when I put it on the fish. It's a really nice color. I'm gonna make sure there's a good little amount on that. So I want a nice coating, top and bottom. So once again, I'm gonna take my hand and just rub it in all over the place. On the sides, on the top, flip it over. And do on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I think I'm trying to see if I want to do a few cuts on it, or I might just do it. I'm gonna figure this out in a second. I want to see what I want to do with it. So there you go. So it should be nice and seasoned. And you can see the little bits of in my seven spice. I have um, dried bell peppers, yellow and orange, and you can see them. Uh, if not, let me get it up. You can see the little specks. All right, let me wash my hand again. This meal is actually an easier one to prepare since I got some stuff done before time, which was just really the sweet potatoes. Uh, uh, making sure it the boil pretty well in the orange juice that I had in it. If you case you came in late um, or you're watching this uh, uh, after, like I said, I took the sweet potato, diced them, and put them in some orange juice to go ahead and give them a nice flavor, something different. Uh, if anybody asks uh, or wonders how I get my recipes, a lot of this stuff is all food science to me, and I check and see what mixes together. <laughs> kind of like elements on the uh, periodic table. 
Uh, you just got to figure out what works. Uh, if it doesn't, if they say, well, no, that's no go, nobody likes it, or you can't find something with it, uh, you tend to go on to other things. Like I was in the grocery store today trying to figure out something. So this, the uh, um, what I want to do is go ahead and try something different. And of course, anybody that knows me, I love colors in my food. So you'll see the green from the asparagus. Uh, let me bring this up again. So you'll see green from the asparagus. You'll see the orange uh, to, well, yellow, yellow, orange, reddish type color on top with the sea bass along with the white and golden brown of the uh, fish. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to start actually getting the pan hot for the sea bass. And uh, once I know it's getting pretty good on that one side of the fish, then I'm going to go ahead and start putting on my asparagus. So like I said, this is a faster meal compared to what I've been doing, but seafood usually goes pretty quick. So let's get that started. So let me get closer. I'll put the fish over here on the cutting board for a second. And let's get this on the stove. Love that. That's just the sauce from when I cooked those sweet potatoes in. I want to try it. <laughs> so eventually we'll see how that is. Could almost make a soup, basically. Be interesting. All right, let's get the pan, my favorite pan here. Get the pan a little bit. And what we're going to do, really, it's got a lot of oil in it, so I'm going to put just a little bit on it. And there it is right there. Just put a little bit. Let it do its thing. Let me see if the actually the light will look good on that. Or is that too much? It looks like a pretty good right there. Can you see well on it? Yes. Okay, good. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like when I'm set, when I'm searing it, so that way you'll know what's going on. I'm just gonna let the pan uh, heat up real quick. Um, take a look at the asparagus, asparagus again. Nice green color, beautiful. Uh, just chop off the ends; they were pretty much in good order. Threw that seven spice uh, oil on there. Been letting it sit for the last uh, probably about 10, 15 minutes. So when we get closer to finishing one side of the fish, then I'll add these on. So we got that, and if any, anybody else has joined or is watching with somebody, uh, this is the puree uh, of the sweet potatoes that I cooked in orange juice. So that's gonna go on top. And I'll show you a little, a little trick. Some of you might already know it, and some might not, to doing really good portions, or having a really exact, where you want it, a focal point to put in. All right, so I'm going to show you a little something. Baggy. You don't have a pastry bag. All you got to do is cut up the tip. That's it. So that's what we use today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look. Let's see if this. Yeah, it's actually doing really, really good. I'm going to get this a little bit hotter and go from there. Make sure it's nice and coated everywhere. Probably one of the best nonstick pans I've ever used. Scandinavian. Love it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is skin down in the pan. Let that go ahead and get a nice sear on that one side. I figure I can go ahead and take it out of the pan and uh, once it's finished, go ahead and um, cut it up then if I want to go ahead and do that. Make it easier on myself. Or when you're cooking it or trying to decide to try out this recipe, you can uh, probably do that yourself as well, make it a lot easier for yourself.
We've been wanting to try this fish. We've tried a, diff a lot of different types of fish, um, from mahi mahi to uh, trout to redfish to catfish to tilapia, things like that, which we won't touch tilapia ever again uh, due to certain things. Uh, it's a good fish, but it's just the way they are, they farm them is kind of messed up. Wild caught Yes, we do a lot of um, wild caught, or if we can find it, sustainably farmed, which, you know, usually they're in the same water that they normally are, and they're just more centrally located in that maybe river or pond or wherever. Because have you seen some of the things you see when it comes to um, farm raised? It's not good. <laughs> so, it's not a fun thing. So as we're doing that, getting a nice crisp on it, you can see how it just slides. Let that keep on going. Let me try one asparagus stock. Spear. Spear, sorry. I don't know why I'm saying stock. I actually think that sounds good. So let's go ahead and add these now. Oh yeah, I can hear it. I'm not touching the pan just in case you think I'm getting too close. Even though they, my wife says I have a asbestos hands, asbestos hands. Oh, I'm sorry about that. There you go. I know this is like my fifth or sixth video. I'm still getting uh, accustomed to some things. Wife is helping me out some. Give me direction. I called her. I told her she was my producer yesterday. It's hard to watch the food and the camera. Yeah. As well as being my food taster. There we go. I'm actually going to go ahead and um, just put these back on the same plate once they're finished. Let me wash that real quick. I love the presentation that uh, the asparagus brings to the table. Um, it, is, it just has a really good color when you cook it. And then as well, uh, it, just, it can be used as a platform, like what I'm going to do today. Where you put it first on the plate and flip the fish across it. You can do that with anything. You can do it with steak. You can do it with chicken. All right, let's see if we can flip this over. Might have to do. There's my little. Get a big spatula. They can't do the fish. There you go. So that's what the back side of this part got a nice little crisp to it. And uh, you'll see the top part. You can see a little bit of crispness around the edges. So, all right. So while it's doing its thing, uh, I'm going to go get a plate because this is going to happen really quickly. Let me check some of these. Yeah, as this goes, we'll start flipping them. The asparagus. Put some attention back on that. All right, let me get a plate. Is that going to be a bread plate, maybe? We can do a yolk now. Let's do a white. All right. Let's see if we can start messing with some of these. These little mini tongs. Oh yeah, look at that. Get a nice little char on the outside on some of them. Oh yeah, look at that one. Oh, 
All righty, what we'll do now, um, let's keep an eye on the special right now. Go ahead and do that. While that is, the, the, the fish is continuing to be, uh, continue cooking, we want to go ahead and add uh, the puree to the Ziploc bag. And show you what I'm doing with it. Oops, got a little on the outside. Ooh. Sorry, that's good. <laughs> And try. Yeah, yeah, believe it or not, a lot of the stuff that I do is uh, it's never been tried. So I am doing science, science experiments in front of you and not knowing what the outcome would be. So, you know, that's why I do live, uh, live stream because I want to show that there's, there could be a lot of human error in cooking. Uh, like I've said before, you can. You can go ahead and do videos all day long, but uh, you know you can always pick out your mistakes and redo it all over again. This is all live, so if I mess up, I mess up. You laugh with me, you get pissed off with me, whatever you want to do, <laughs> it works out. As you can see, the asparagus is beautiful. Getting a little char. All right, let's see about the fish here. Let's see that. Yeah. Look at that. Bam. All right, what I want to do is I want to cover it real quick because I want a I want to kind of steam it. So I'm gonna put something over it that will work. And this does work. So I'm gonna do that. And let that sit for a second because I want to make sure everything is cooked right. You don't want to give raw fish. Never get raw fish. I need something to. I got some. I want to add a little water to the side. So what I'm gonna do is, as you can see, I'm gonna lift up the thing and just add a little bit of water. And let it steam pretty well. Let's do the same there. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn off this asparagus because it's done. I'm going to take it off with my nifty tongs here. Look how beautiful it is. If my sister's watching, she's probably having a fit right now because she loves asparagus. When you can't go outside, this is the next best thing. Oops. Have a little trouble there. And there we go. And bam. Look how beautiful that is. All right. Oh, for y'all who don't know, I'm letting that steam for a quick second. Uh, my wife's birthday is Monday, and so this is the reason why I'm doing this. She wanted to try some sea bass or have some type of seafood, so I wanted to do something special for her. So this is what I decided to do. Um, I was trying to figure out what to go with, and she likes pretty much everything that I do. Uh, very seldom that we have an issue with something that is maybe not really good, uh, i.e. when we did lamb. Lamb was not good. We're not lamb people. Maybe in a, a euro, but not to the side. But I did make a kick ass sauce. I did a um, pomegranate and uh, balsamic uh, glaze for it. Now that would go on anything. You can go on salads, you can go on ice cream, you can go it on. It was really good. It's, it, it, was, it was on. I, I, uh, that was the only good thing that came out of it. The lamb did not go to waste? The lamb didn't go to waste either. We had a dog. Uh, we do have a dog still, Jetta. Uh, you'll see her eventually. 
Uh, she um, loved it and destroyed it. So, all good. All right, so I'm going to turn down this temperature on this fish and let it finish up. But I think the steaming, that way it stays moist and um, it doesn't dry up or anything like that because uh, sea bass can be, uh, it's really flaky fish. Uh, use it a lot in baking, pretty much. You can pan sear them. Uh, I've probably seen people do different things with it. I mean, they, they, people try to fry everything, so they'll do that as well. Um, I think I've seen it as a, in a ceviche, if I'm correct, where they chop it up really fine and you got your little acids and stuff like that, and they eat it like that with different things. Um, that, uh, dude, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. This is how, look how, look how creamy this is. The stuff that I put in the Ziploc bag, this is the sweet potato mixture. Yes. And that can go in a tart. That's how good it is. Just put it in a tart. It's got the sweetness. I just tried a little bit of it. Yeah, I'm glad I made enough. I told my wife, I said, it'd be the time that I make something small and there's not enough and she would love it. So I really think she's going to like that. You have the savory from the seasonings. You have the uh, sweetness from the sweet potato. It's, it's a yin and yang type of thing. You like to have, I, I like to have um, some savory and some sweet. It's like having salty and sweet. It's things like that. You have to, the two work together really well. In fact, uh, hopefully in the near future, uh, I'm going to try something really off the wall. Uh, uh, pork is coming again, but I'm going to do a different type of savory pork chop. But I'm going to make a homemade applesauce ice cream. And I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's actually really cool. Uh, you make the ice cream, you have a little, little ramekin, and you have your pork chop on your side and stuff like that. And the chill with the warm nature of the food and the seasonings and stuff, especially the sweet and, the sweet and savory, just goes together. So I'm starting to see more of that. So I want to try something like that. So I'm gonna make my homemade base, uh, ice cream base, uh, actually do my own apples, um, cook some stuff down with some, you know, some different ingredients and then mix it all together. I'm gonna actually make the ice cream in front of y'all. It's gonna be like the first thing that I do. It's gonna, because we have the kitchen aid attached, attachment for the, uh, I'm sorry, we have the attachment for the kitchen aid, which you have to freeze it, I think 24, 40 hours before you use it. And then you put all your stuff and it mixes it for you. And then you just take it out of the bowl and then put it back into the refrigerator until you use it again. So it's kind of cool. So we'll see. A little, a little food science there. Always love food science. All right. Let's go ahead and get back to the pan. I did enough talking. So as you've seen, I did go ahead and steam it. Oh, yeah. That way nothing got to waste. So what I'm gonna do now, before I plate, I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice fit of this. So what I'm gonna do is go transfer this over to my community on cutting board piece. I'm gonna switch over the camera here in a second, but just let me. All right. Let me switch the camera over for you so you can see what's going on. All right, here we go. I'm traveling. Hope I don't make you sick. There's uh, everybody's face. All right, see that pretty well? Looks like you can, yes. That is the sauce. I gotta try that, really. All right, so you see how pretty that is? Nice little color. That's what I like about these. Look at that. Looks so good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a nice, I want a strip, because I want that to go across the um, asparagus. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let that continue to sit for a second while I plate the Asparagus. So we'll take a few asparagus. And what you want to do is you want to make a a bed for the sea bass. You can kind of make them up and down, kind of give it a little bit of uh, personality, which way you want to do. But you want to do it in the middle. 
going to give you a little bit more than what the uh, restaurant would give you. <laughs> so, so what you got right there, see, with all the nice color, the char of it. See all that? I'm going to have that as the bed. So what we're going to do next is that we're going to lay the uh, sea bass across this way, almost making an X. So let me get that cut. So what I'll do is I like this area right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in, in there, thinner area right here. So let's give me a fork. Which I'm going to get not move. And I am going to get this nice little piece right here. Woo! That's a beautiful white fish. It's beautiful. It seems to be pretty fatty. I've never messed with uh, uh, sea bass before, and like the way it looks. All right, let me get that so I can sit down and uh, let me get the spatula, the other one I want, because I want this to be done perfectly. So what you want to do is cross the top like that. All right, so that's that part done. You got your second layer. So now we're going to do the third layer. This where this comes in handy. Little bag. You don't have a pastry bag? Ziploc. That's all you need. So what you're going to do is everybody has, usually has a pair of uh, kitchen uh, scissors. Cheers. No. Another drawer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, these usually can cut through cartilage, bone, all that stuff, and they usually have a thing to crack the bone right here. Or you can just get your regular pair of scissors, doesn't matter which way. So what you want to do is just cut off the tip. Bam. And what we're going to do is right in the middle. Bam. You have your topping. Not finished yet. There's another layer. So the sweet potatoes, sweet potato needs a little something on top. So a little brown sugar sprinkle. On top of that, still not done. Another little toy that we have in our kitchen is a torch. <laughs> and then you pull it out the torch. And uh, yeah, my wife didn't know I was looking at the torch, but you know you got to keep the surprises. So this is the little kitchen torch. This is for your. This is for creme brulees and things like that, or you just want to. Get something a little toasty. So, bam, hit the top. Get that caramelization going. I actually even like doing a little bit of the food because I like this, just the presentation. And the way the fat is and skin, give it a little something on the edges. Also, you know, you know, I take pictures, so I kind of like things looking kind of nice. So, bam. So, if you've never seen a kitchen torch, there you go. There, you can get them at kitchen supply places. All right, so this right here, uh, one more thing. Very picky about my plating. She knows this. If you like to be very particular about the plating, this is the way to do it. Just get your nice little clean rag and then finish off with a paper towel to dry it off and give it a nice little response. All right, so this is my sea bass over asparagus topped with a pureed sweet potato. Let me know what you think. 
All right, picture before she eats, as always, so I can put it up on Facebook. <laughs> Let me find my. All right, so let's do this. I got to put it in the area that, since she's right there, let me go ahead and do that. Oh, it's your portrait mode, anyways. Well, I think I'm taking pictures. Go ahead and we do this. And all right. So what we're gonna do is give her a fork and a it's gonna actually be kind of buttery, so I don't think she's gonna need a knife. But let's get to her. Those that I know, if y'all are watching this in the future, this is my wife. She always tastes my food and she's my dedicated producer. Smells really good. Extremely like buttery, it's really good. That's what they say. They do say that uh, that the fish is usually um, sea bass. Mm -hmm. Let me come around over to you. I want to change over. Um. Let's get this higher because I'm um, taller. All right. Um, sea bass is is taller. I mean taller. <laughs> Sorry. Is a uh, buttery fish. It's uh, they. Uh, what else they use it in? I think it's more. It's. it's <laughs> I'm sorry. So once again, I did the uh, sweet potato and the brown and the orange juice. So if you want a good a, a, a good idea to have something sweet, uh, sweet potato and orange juice is good. You can always incorporate some of the orange juice back into the puree when you're doing it, as well as um, a butter. That's what I use in cooking. So, so what is the texture? Because like I said, I, I want to I want them to, to see it's, what it. It's um. Uh, it's. Flaky but firm, actually. It's not as firm as salmon. It's it's more flaky, but it's. As I see that it's fatty too. That's yes, the thing. It that's, is. That's, it is really. Nice. So it almost reminds me of a, a, a fish that is like a ribeye. <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. It's crazy because I was looking at it as I was cooking it. Really good. But it is flaky. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's flaky. It's not like. It's flaky but firm. Okay. It's it's not gonna fall apart, but it's really good and it's it's flaky, but it's not you know, salmon is kind of firm but it'll fall apart. You know, it's yeah. It's different. It's wonderful. All right, somebody okay, that was Okay, she's that picture turning out of her. I was like, who is so who's going? All right, y'all. Um today I was a little bit over the place. I, I noticed that I was kind of pausing a little bit. Uh this like I said, a lot of stuff's been going on. Um this past couple weeks, dealing with work, uh, it's just busy. It's not bad things. It's just that it's uh, it's busy time. Um, I'm in a I'm in a in the uh, an occupation that is needed right now, essential um, senior housing. So uh, it works. It goes really well. Yeah. So the that between the storming and then trying to figure out if I was going to be able to find my ingredients to cook today, that's uh, that that had me all occupied. But I'm glad to get it finished. This one's a little bit shorter than normal. Hey, almost 30 minutes. <laughs> so, but we did a lot of talking today, so it could have been shorter than that. Um, I appreciate it. anybody that is uh, that tuned in to watch. Um, as time goes by, we'll get better and I'll get more organized. Uh, today was like a was like it was all done in one day. Normally, I try to have at least a couple of days, but today was all done in one day. I had to figure out recipes. I was actually at the at the store looking at everything to see what I was wanting to do, and um, I had to look it up, make sure it worked, and all that good stuff. And what was fresh? In yeah, what was also what was fresh, because some things didn't look good, so <laughs> we wanted to make sure. And there was a line to the uh, to the uh, the seafood uh, uh, yeah. counter, so yeah, it all worked out. She has, looks like she's happy, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish. Let her finish cooking. I mean, eating, and I'm gonna make my plate and we're going to relax for the rest of the night. So I hope you enjoyed watching this, uh, just in time for cooking. And for y'all that don't know, uh, my name is Justin. 
So come back and see me every week at 5.30. I will, if I have any interruptions, I will let y'all, try to let y'all know in advance if I'm not able to make it for that weekend. But I try to go ahead and let y'all know as uh, soon as I can. But uh, we will see you next Saturday at around 5.30 if, uh, if, time, if time permits. Uh, thanks, and we will see you then. Bye. Snappy new big fish.